back with Coach Jason Simpson. Skyhawk talk continues from Snappy Tomato Pizza. Coach, you talked about how balanced the league was. Man, four games on Saturday. Uh, every team scored between 30 and 38 points. Yeah, I think the offenses are, um, well, you know, the scoring offense is definitely up. Uh, I remember one year in this league, um, let me pull this thing up here. Okay. There we go. I think I remember one year in this league. I think the the leading uh, the, the, the points per game was like twenty six points, and uh, I think it was like back in 06. So you know the defense really dominated. So this year though, it's uh, uh, you know the offenses are putting up some yards, putting up some points. So yeah, it is you know and um, but every one of those games could have gone the other way. Yeah, you know, what is it? Thirty eight, thirty. Yeah, thirty seven, thirty seven, thirty four, thirty one. I mean, every one team scored between thirty one and thirty eight. And, uh, and and two home teams lost, right? Uh, us yeah. and Murray uh, were the two home teams that lost, and Austin P in Southeast Missouri held serve. Let's talk about the games. I know you didn't get to watch it. They were playing the same time as we right. were. They all were. But Jacksonville State wins over Murray State, thirty eight thirty. You know, uh, Murray's got a couple injuries, and then. The big thing is, I know they're concerned about. It. I'm sure. I think they only ran for like 11 or 16 yards, and uh, you know, no team wants to be just totally one-dimensional like that. I mean, they don't want to run for 200, but you know, they need to get their 100, 100 yards, and they didn't do that. And uh, you know, Jacksonville is is sketchy as it's been up to this point. You know, still sitting there three and zero, and uh, kind of taking care of their business. So we'll need some help. Somebody needs to beat them, and. Uh, and uh, but obviously right now they kind of control their own destiny. Southeast Missouri won at home over Eastern Illinois, thirty-seven thirty. That's the team that's kind of getting a little bit better each week. It seems like you know they had a couple, several losses early, uh, but they got the senior quarterback. Uh, you know, he's probably one of the better players in this league, and uh, he gives them a chance with their option attack. And uh, you know, you kind of wrote them off early uh, just because they had the losses, but uh, I think you'll see them. Uh, they're going to be tough to beat as the year goes on. We'll talk more about Austin P a little bit later in the in the program, but they beat Tennessee State 37-34 at Austin. Crazy P. game. I mean, it was 27 to six with uh, less than a minute in the first half, and Tennessee State fumbles at their minus four, like just running a quarterback sneak to run out the clock. Austin P recovers it, scores just with a few seconds left in the first half. So now it's 27-13, halftime. You know, gives them a little enthusiasm, a little hope. Uh, they score, you know, within the first minute of the third quarter. Now it's a seven-point game with the whole second half. And, um, you know, and then they fall back and won the game. So, you know, Tennessee Tech and Austin P are two of the same type of teams as far as a, uh, you know, uh, you know, never-die type mentality. And so you've got to put them away when you have a chance. Standings now, Jacksonville State and Tech at 3-0. and Austin P 2-0, and Southeast Missouri 1-1. One and one. The Skyhawks and the Racers are 1-2, and two. Eastern Kentucky at 0-1, Tennessee State's 0-2, and, and Eastern Illinois is 0-3. So still in the middle of the pack, you uh, had said on record, and I, you know, I still agree with this, the conference champion could easily have two losses. So just because we lose uh, two conference games here early in the season doesn't mean that we can't win an OVC championship. No, it doesn't. You know, and it's, it, and it's going to change each week. We'll come in here and, you know, I'll talk about the mix and stuff. And, you know, the thing, though, that you don't like about it, the two 3-0 and teams have both beat us. So that's, uh, you know, that's a problem right right there. But, you know, at this point in the season, you can't think about that. You just got to go back to work. Uh, we got to get a win this week. Um, you know, uh, this is my favorite game of the year, not not because it's Austin P, but our homecoming game is my favorite game of the year because uh, I've said this before, w- you know, UT Martin has the best homecoming tradition of anybody in the OVC, uh, in my opinion, of anybody in the FCS football. And so, uh, and you're a big part of that, by the way. Uh, oh, thank you. Well, I mean, uh, you know, you, Trudy, Joe, I mean, our administration and, and the, just the uh, tradition of our You know our school, why that means so the, much The to KAs me. that just came yeah. in, the rope pull shirts. Yeah. Everybody was, was sleeveless shirts on. They've been working yeah. today. They've been, you know, working on the rope pull. That's, that's a, it's just a great, neat tradition. We used to have a UT Martin coach that sat here and said, it's a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> so so that means a lot, you say. Well, and I understand where that's coming from. But, you know, you're, you know like I said, there's not going to be 100,000 people in our stadium. On, on Saturday, you know, and there, there's only a few of those stadiums in the country. You know, I saw Middle Tennessee played Memphis the other day. You know, they had a, and this is no knock on Middle Tennessee, but, you know, they had a listed crowd of, you know, 20,000. Okay, and I, that's probably, you know, being generous. So there's just a lot of things to do out there for the entertainment dollar. So True. when we can get 6,000, 8,000 people in our stadium, it's a huge day. And, you know, to celebrate the tradition of, you know, of our university, of our football program, uh, you know, quad, you know, tent city, uh, you know, the Pyramid Show on Friday night, I just think it's a big deal, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And the Letter Winners Breakfast and Hall of Fame induction ceremonies that Saturday, too. And for a lot of fans, it's their one chance to watch a Skyhawk game every year if they live if they live away off. Well, I tell you what, I wish that everybody, could, you know, could come to that breakfast. I'll be honest mm-hmm. with you, and I hope I'm not getting in trouble saying that. But that is, that is kind of the quickest way to get yourself caught up on uh, – 
you know, in UT Martin um, athletic traditions. Uh, when you hear those stories, when you hear yeah. uh, when you hear the uh, the deep love that many people that get inducted into our Hall of Fame have, you know, for this university and the stories and all the people in the town and community that helped them along the way. Uh, you know, I've been here six years, but I feel like I've been here 20 years, and uh, and 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 I hope you know that over the years that that I come in, in, entrenched in the history of this program and uh, been able to help develop it and grow it, and uh, it just makes me proud. It really does. You know, it's interesting that. We plan that event, and you know who's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and you know who's going to induct them in the Hall of Fame. But you don't know what those stories are going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. And they're always they always kind of catch you off guard a little bit, <laughs> and you realize that a lot of these folks who went on to do other things, UT Martin was a big part of their life, and one person on campus or two or three, you know, put them in the right direction to be where they are today. Well, it's pretty neat, you know. And I hope over the six years I've been head coach here that. 15 years from now, whatever, there'll be some kids that I've coached that had a chance because I can, you know, whether it be the Donald Chapmans, the uh, Kay Thompsons, you know, uh, the Joe Gibbs, whatever, uh, you know, I hope I'm, you know, able to be here and, and hear their stories because that's got to be just really neat for, you know, for Coach Carroll and any of the other coaches that are able to come back and see their players inducted in the Hall of Fame. I just think that's a really neat, um, you know, neat day. And you know what's funny, too, is that you expect them to come back and then talk about specific games or plays, but that's usually not the case. The memories you make are not during the game. No, you're exactly right. You know, you know, every year you always hear the bus trips, yeah. you know, especially in the in the spring sports and stuff because they're, you know, they take more road trips and especially the football team does but usually your football players you know are going to talk about the dorms and they're going to talk about camp and they're going to talk about a, a coach you know who who got after him who made them laugh you know as they were making fun of him in the dorm because of how hard he was on them and stuff and that's just you know that's what the uh you know that's why college athletics is such a is, is such a neat uh you know great tradition one of the statistics that we had and i was going to ask you about and i'm not really i don't have the numbers in front of me but Tennessee Tech and UT Martin are three of the top schools in the state of Tennessee when it comes to having homegrown players from Tennessee. Right. And you guys take I a lot saw of that, 56 and, and yeah, 61. That, and yeah. Tennessee, the Vols, I think, were second, which surprised me. Middle was at the bottom, and Tennessee State was down there and some of the other schools. And I was trying to briefly and quickly explain on the air why it benefits you to have Tennessee players on the right. team. Right. Well, well, first I go back. I bet you the Knoxville one is I want to know how many of those guys are on scholarship. That's true. Compared that's to, true. to you know to walk on that program because I mean that's obviously you know uh, some young men that's their dream and would run that through the T and that's fine and uh, you know they may turn down scholarships or they may not and but still Knoxville you know just like us needs quality walk ons in their program to to uh, to practice against or to you know maybe maybe grow one of them into a player one day mm -hmm. uh, but players in the state of Tennessee well, you know it's a I've always said kind of the formula for us is this Chris is that you know I need the freshman the high school freshman. And those are the foundation of our program. The guys that have been here four years, five years, the Derek Cars, the guys that have seen our traditions, uh, you know, they they've 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 heard the you know, the speech is over and over, but it's okay, but they know what the expectations are, okay? And then um, you then you add your junior college players, a couple of transfers, you know, and so there's the, the formula, okay? But to have the Tennessee high school players um, you know, is more of a ground root system than anything because, especially here in West Tennessee, because they understand the history of the program. They understand the West, West Tennessee. They understand, you know, what a soybean festival is. <laughs> you know, we've got a kid from Miami, and I uh, love him to death, and he asked me what a soybean was. You know, and so, and he was, you know, he's very he's sincere. Real, yeah. And so, uh, you know, but, you know, our, uh, you know, Kendall Harper, you know, under, understands. So does Jarvis Pitt. You know, they, they understand. So, uh, you know, that's where you need to start, and that's how, you know, you, you plant the seed of your program and you grow from there. And, and with the players that are close by, I'm sure their parents and family can be more active with the team. Well, it, it, and it's really neat. You kind of see that those usually are the, the parents that, uh, you know, kind of, kind of run the tailgates kind of you know because they're able to be here every week they're able to get here on friday or, or get here earlier and stuff they're kind of uh you know they've got connections you know to our university they usually had a relative to go to school here and uh you know so it just really is is is, is a neat deal to geographically you know have a strong foundation and, and it helps with the high school coaches you know because there may be a uh, you know a prospect next year that central arkansas or southeast missouri is recruiting and uh you know, um, you know, they know that we take care, you know, of our own here in the state of Tennessee, and that maybe they help that kid, you know, uh, say good things about us and get him to, you know, really consider us. Or they have a transfer that goes to Notre Dame and it doesn't work out, and he you know, says, hey, you got to, you know, give Coach Simpson a call at UT Martin. I think that'd be a great place for you. So it's a twofold um, system, and um, you know, it's you, you just try to treat people as good as you can, and uh, 
and uh, get good players in your program. When you look at uh, prep athletes in the state of Tennessee, you know, when I hear about high school football, I, you hear about Texas and Alabama mm-hmm. and even what goes on in Mississippi and some of the other states. Where's Tennessee falling amongst all that? You know, I don't know statistically what it is, but, you know, I, I know it's very difficult here in the OVC with four OVC FCS schools or four FCS football playing schools, and then you had Chattanooga. Okay, so there's five. And based on our uh, population in the state, basically you got five schools dividing those FCS caliber players. Okay, and so that makes up you know over a third of your uh, or, or almost half of your uh, your of your OVC. So I think you know when you say you know why haven't we won a, a game in the playoffs? That plays into that too. You know because sure. we're not in Texas or we're not in Florida where you know the number of of, of football players are, are there, and, and then you're course you're dividing them by you know in the state of alabama right now fcs programs after this year are still what is it, jacksonville state and alabama state well i guess alabama a&m too mm-hmm. so they got three to where we've got five and i don't know exactly know the, the difference of the That's population a good point, though yeah have you recruited texas before have you been yes there i was, you know, was there for three years yeah and, uh, i mean we see what we see on friday night lights and read and, and and a lot of the high school coaches there make more than college coaches and yeah. their stadiums are nicer is, right. that, is that all real that's all real uh, you know not every school but yeah uh, the neat thing, I mean, you have to get an appointment with several of those high school coaches to see them. And I, but, I, but I knew it was big time on this when it was December, and you would go in there to see a high school coach, and, and, and he had been let go, okay, and where he didn't finish out his teaching contract. He was let go in December, uh, but, his assistant, but his, all of his staff was let go too. Uh, just that like, doesn't happen in no, high school. No, just like, you know. Well, when, do they teach classes? <laughs> uh, some of them do, but when you would go into, you know, the, there may be 15 coaches at one of those 6A high schools. You know, each with their own cubicle there, and uh, you know, and and you've never seen high school coaches be able to go take a job, take a new job, and take, you know, six to eight of their coaches yeah. to another high school with them during the middle of the year. Yeah, I don't know how it all worked, but I, you know, I knew I that I was big time. Were high you school football. were you ever involved with a high school team as a coach? Uh, in in Mississippi, I was for a short period of time, Collins, uh, Mississippi, just really close proximity, maybe ten minutes from where Jason and Julius McNair grew up. Okay. Matter of fact, their Uncle Fred coaches there now. Yeah. The Collins uh, Collins High ti- Tigers. How is that different being a coach in high school kids? It's uh, it, it's challenging from the standpoint of uh, you don't get to re- recruit. You coach what lives within the city limits. You're not supposed to recruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you coach. No, you're you right. Know, you coach, <laughs> but you, but you're dealing with uh, you know the, you're dealing with uh, the difference of the, the of the men that I deal with 1822 or you know career choices you know um you know personal problems you know uh different things come in that, that, that 18 20 year old men uh get faced with okay now 14 to 18 year old boys you know there's still issues but they're just maybe not as uh you know um illegal yeah okay no, they're right. maybe not as dangerous you know for their decision but and they may- have a support system usually at they're home, supposed to live with their family right but there's still yeah. decisions that affect their lives uh, so the high school coaches are so critical in that, in the guidance of, uh, you know, of the choice that young men's make, and they're and they're dealing with maybe what maybe one out of just like I may have one out of a hundred that have an opportunity to to play to get an NFL camp. There's probably one out of a hundred at that high school that you're still trying to keep motivated to play. They can get a scholarship compared to where everybody else is just playing, just to, so they can play right. on a good high school quality football team. So it's it's kind of the same. It's just it's just different age of kids. Would you ever? And I don't I don't I don't want you to go anywhere. And you're very young. And I don't want this <laughs> to be a self fulfilling prophecy. But would if you were ever given the opportunity to be an assistant for an NFL team, would you see yourself doing that? I mean, you really seem to enjoy coaching with right, college right. athletes. But this is a whole different right. situation. I think there's pros and cons of it. Uh, I would uh, you know I would so much miss the the college environment. The, uh, you know the the community atmosphere and the alumni support and things. Those would be the things that I would miss. The dealing with players that um, you know are going to be uh, they want to go back and be high school coaches. You know they know they're not going to play in the next level, but give give uh, you know 40 hours a week just to 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 play on special teams on Saturday. That is a neat you know that is a great experience to be the coach of uh, Joe Donovan. Mm-hmm. I mean that is a rewarding experience. But there is a lot to you know the opportunity to coach in the NFL to where. All you're doing is uh, it's like being a professor of football. You know, you don't recruit, you don't have to discipline. You have, you know, the the, the general manager or the, or the owner of the team does that, and all you do is X's and O all day. I can see why some men would go from college to the NFL 
uh, for the allure of just, uh, you know, of just X's and O and to see, you know, you block, you tackle, this pass route works versus that. And so that would be, you know, why you see guys leave college to go to the NFL ranks. When I watch the NFL coaches on the sideline, they don't look like they're having as much fun as the college coaches. <laughs> well, know you know, one that. thing you have seen, though, is that once I've got a friend that coaches running backs, the Miami Dolphins, and, you know, and hopefully they'll have a, have a job after this year. I know they're struggling a bit. But now Jeff's been in the league, I guess, for, you know, for four seasons now and stuff. And so once you kind of get in that little circuit, you know, you kind of just make the yeah. rounds because there's so much knowledge that goes in with that than, than what you'd have to teach a, a college coach you know, when, when he comes out. 